So this is my finished Harper Freight, four foot by eight foot folding trailer. And I wanted to uh, show you a few tips that might help you if you're planning on building one of these. I will say um, I, I spent, I think, $279 for this one. And you can sometimes find them on sale and get a little bit off of that. But uh, 279 is what you're going to spend roughly for this. And this is the 1,190 pound version. They make a more heavy duty one that I think is like 1,700 pounds. I think it's about $100 or more than this one. Uh, I think the, the rails are a little bit thicker. It's the only difference. But this is the, uh, the folding trailer. And um, what I will say is that um, although this is a good deal for a trailer, at 279 you are going to put quite a few hours to get it to this point. This comes in two large boxes, about 250 pounds total, so you'll need a truck or an SUV to get that home. And you don't, you don't really need any kind of special skills, except to know how to handle a wrench, a screwdriver maybe, and the wiring is uh, simple enough to follow. The instructions are a little tricky. Uh, you can pay close attention to them. Um, but basically, one of the things I found out was that one of the places where this folding trailer hinges is right here. The instructions will tell you to put that bolt in from this direction to this direction, which is fine if you're not going to use a plywood flooring, but if you are going to use a plywood flooring, that makes this stick out a little bit farther here. So if you're going to use the plywood flooring, you have to wind up notching the plywood and notching it deeper than you would be if you turned it around. So I, I originally put it in the way the instructions did. And uh, when I started putting down my plywood flooring, I realized um, that would work better this way. It didn't have to notch as much. But this makes um, a pretty good little kayak trailer. One of the other things I did with the wiring I wanted to show you was this uh, the split coupling right here. Uh, you can get that at Harbor Freight. It's a little bit of a pain installing and fishing it through the, the holes. I think that was 3 8 inch. Um, but if you go through a little bit of extra trouble like that, I think it's going to protect your wires better. These rail holders come with the kit. That's in case you want to put side railings on it and make a deeper trailer. Um, I recommend installing them even if you don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. But at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get these little loops here, these little 3 8 loops that you can attach to it. And I got one for all two, four, six, eight of these that come with it. And for tying down your kayak or mulch or anything else you plan on using this trailer for, um, that's a good idea. I also put this reflective tape all around the trailer. You can get that at Harbor Freight also. It's pretty cheap in case you're driving it at night. I also got this trailer jack. I think I paid 20 or 25 dollars for that. You're going to want that. That's easy to install. Just a couple of bolts there. Get it going. And uh, this actually, I can't show you because I'm holding a camera, but you pull this out, this spins sideways when you're trailering. Pull it out, it locks in place when you're done. And then just like any other jack, it'll raise or lower the trailer. that's pretty much it. I'll show you, um, if you don't want to install the plywood flooring, I got a couple tips on how you can um, still use this as a kayak trailer by using your existing wings or um, kayak racks uh, like I did. One last thing I wanted to show you was, even though this comes well painted, this enamel, what I would recommend is getting something like this Rust-Oleum clear enamel 
because even when I was drilling, you're going to come across a few places like this where you're going to have some bare metal, a little bit of surface rust showing up. This, since this is clear, you can kind of go over any place that looks like it's potential for rust and apply some of that, and that should uh, protect that a little bit better too. So here's an option you can use to haul your kayaks if you don't want to put on the plywood flooring and you maybe already have bought some kind of kayak racks or wings. I used to use these Malone style wings on top of my SUV and I thought well let me try them out on the on the rails of this new trailer and see how sturdy that is and they're very sturdy. Um, what I had to do look down here is the regular bolts that come with this are too short for this longer rail than what the crossbar on uh, your typical SUV is. So um, you have to make sure you get the right thread count. Uh, this, this happened to be like a metric size so uh, once I figured out what that size was um, I measured through here and figured out how long I needed. I think these were like three and a half inches and um, I found these bolts placement bolts on Amazon for just like you know a buck or two a piece I think I paid for them so if you have something like that that'll work good as an alternative and um, if you don't have to go through the uh, hassle of putting on uh, plywood and using something like the foam blocks or whatever else you, you plan on using um, you can save yourself between probably 75 and 100 dollars between the wood and the paint and the extra hardware uh, carriage bolts and things like that you'd have to buy. Um, the reason I decided not to go with this um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and put the plywood down it's because these kind of um, racks typically are good for residential kayaks up to like 75 pounds. Um, I'm planning on getting um, a fishing kayak to replace the one I have now and a lot of those go well over 75 pounds but um, that's something you can uh, think about um, the other thing is these kind of racks like these Wagner ones here I think I paid hundred and twenty five dollars a pair and I have two of them if you bolt these things down and you're out kayaking two little bolts little wing wing nuts here by hand come off very quickly these could be stolen very easily so that's something I always worried about even when I had them on top of the car. If you are going to use that I would recommend locking those down. I got something like this master python lock that works well for this. It's a real thick steel cable that I uh, wind up running through um, and around the rails and getting it kind of cinching it up kind of tight to make sure somebody would have a really hard time stealing it. So um, that's that's one option if you don't plan on putting on the plywood decking you can go this route these you can swing out wider if you need to you need to get uh, two two sides on there or one in the middle if you have a big one and you want to put in the middle you can do that so that's something you can um, think about as an option if you don't want to go the route of um, putting on your your plywood so I've got a couple of pointers if you're going to put down the, uh, the plywood decking um, I would use three-quarter inch plywood just get your four foot by eight foot standard sheet and I got mine at Lowe's it's about thirty five to forty dollars I think make sure it's pressure treated and um, what I would do is uh, before you leave have them cut it in half they get a nice big saw there they can cut it in half for you and make a lot cleaner cut than what you can do yourself with a circular saw so one of the first problems I saw was all four corners you've got this bolt that kind of sticks up right here so that sticks up so high that when you put the plywood down here it kind of bows the plywood up and you can't get a real solid connection on the bolts around that so let me show you what I did to get around that I'm sure there's a better way to do this and I'm no carpenter but uh, I just took a regular finish saw like this and just kind of went about two inches on either side, 
cut that back a little bit. Got down here on the edge, you know, slice that little piece out. And uh, if you have a wood chisel, that's going to work a lot better than the uh, screwdriver that I used. But that'll still get the job done. So what you wind up having, I'll show you the finished piece here, is that same piece now. It sits nice and flat and flush. So you can get this bolted down nice and straight. The other thing I did was um, as soon as I got the plywood home, put them out on a couple of sawhorses and let them uh, dry out in the sun for a couple of weeks before painting them. So after I painted them, I, um, well, back up a step. I put two coats of um, Kills Primer on it, let that dry, and then I followed up with two coats of um, just some outdoor house paints that I, that I had left over, trim paint. And um, I asked the paint people down at Home Depot and Lowe's, and they said any kind of outdoor paint would do for this kind of project. So I just used what I had. So drilling the holes was one of the trickiest things for me to do. You've got all these these holes here in the, in the frame that lines up that you have to bolt down your, your plywood. And there's, I think, 13 of these on both sides, so you're looking at a total of 26. I started out by using a little thin, short drill bit from underneath. That didn't work out too well. But um, I think what does work out well, if you've got a couple of simple clamps like this, I would recommend clamping that down before you start and because these rails are so deep it's kind of hard to to mark or get something up through here to mark these holes properly so I would recommend getting a starting out with just a little pilot hole and um, going from there and working your way up to a 3 8 Take your time. If you make a mistake, you got some wood putty. Um, once you get a couple of bolts in place, I would loose fit them, mainly on the corners. Then you can take these clamps off because you want to make sure that you're keeping everything straight. And here's that little notch I was mentioning in the earlier video about this, this hole. Because, because I turned that bolt around, I just needed to barely notch that. For the carriage bolts, these uh, 3 8 inch carriage bolts and washers, uh, they're 3 8 by 1 and a half inches. That works out to be um, just right for this. And um, that's pretty much it. I'll show you the finished product once I'm done here. I'm planning on bolting this down next. And then I'll uh, move on and show you how, how I plan to use it. So here's what uh, the trailer looks like finished with the plywood bolted down. The nice thing about these carriage bolts, as you can see, is that they're smooth on the top. They're not like regular hex bolts, so that will make uh, sliding kayaks on and off of here pretty nice. They won't get caught on anything as much. So the way I intend on using this is taking something like these foam kayak blocks and just putting them right here straight across from where I have these hooks on both sides and that should make strapping down real easy. We'll just go from one hook over to the other, to the other maybe going through a couple of lines on the kayak. If I want to I can still tie them off to the front on any one of the front hooks or on the back hooks here in the back. Like these. So a lot of people, um, these, these blocks were I think like 20 or $25. I've got them on Amazon. They even came with uh, the tie-down ropes. But uh, I've seen a lot of people even using um, like those pool noodles. Um, they just could go straight across and that's even, even cheaper than this. So there it is. One other thing I wanted to show you too, what I would recommend, there's a pen that comes with, with this that locks this down, 
But if you're worried at all about somebody um, running off with your trailer while you're out kayaking, I would recommend getting some kind of a little lock uh, that'll go in its place. Once that's locked down to your to your to your hitch, and you put this lock in place, there's no way they can get that that ball, um, the trailer off the ball, without breaking that lock. So that's just one more thing to keep in mind. So here's what the finished trailer looks like with a kayak and loaded up on it. This is a 14 and a half foot kayak, so you can see this will even handle the longest of kayaks. What works great on this is just using these foam blocks and just a couple of straps. And this literally took me about three minutes to throw this thing on here by myself and strap it down. You can see it's it's not going anywhere. Got plenty of room to add a second kayak. If you want to use end straps on the back here or on the front, you can. As long as you tie this through the deck lines like I did here, this isn't, this isn't really going anywhere. It can't slide that much. And it's not going to slide much anyway because it's tracking behind the car. It's going to get literally no wind. What some people even do is I've seen them stacking kayaks. You could probably stack up the four kayaks on this unstrap them all together and just tie them down real tight. So the reason I decided to to build this trailer out rather than, than buy one is that most of the kayak trailers I saw were between eight hundred and two thousand dollars and I just wasn't willing to spend more money on a trailer than I was on my kayak itself. So trailer, plywood, materials, paint, um, reflection decals, uh, the trailer stand, everything combined was about $350. And as you can see, that's, that's going to make your life a lot easier. If you've ever kayaked before, uh, you'd know the last thing you want to do at the end of a day when it's hot out and you're tired is to have to lift your kayak on top of a car or on top of your SUV and try to strap that down without scratching your car with the buckles and without burning yourself from the heat of the car which just happened to me and if you unless you're really tall it's going to be hard to to get it up there anyway so I think this is a good idea for anybody who wants an alternative to, to buying a really expensive trailer this should last a long time